Hi, my name is Jason Spanu, DJ Shine with Wave DNA, and this tutorial we're going to take a look at a neat little hack I've been using, a little trick that uh, gets some interesting results with harmonic content. Okay, so we're probably really used to taking a drum clip, so like a clip that's got drum information and augmenting it using liquid rhythm, and uh, I've sort of uh, stumbled across this workflow and it's sort of really been changing the way I work a lot. So I'm going to do the same sort of stuff with harmonic content that I'm used to doing with uh, a drum clip. Okay, so first of all, I'm a, I've got a track here, and in that track, I've got a synthesizer, so we're ready to go. And I'm going to make a uh, like a four bar loop with one chord in each bar. Okay, one different chord in each bar. So I'm going to hit record. There we go. And it's important to do it with one chord per bar because if I add another chord, you'll see they'll start overlapping in weird ways when I do what I'm about to do. So now we're looking at that clip. I'm going to flip into liquid rhythm and I'm going to fold the notes. So I'm only looking at the notes that are being used in that clip. I'm going to also select all, so Apple A. And it's going to highlight all those notes. And if we take a look at our beat form sequencer here, you can see that only one of those little uh, beat forms has been uh, represented. So that's Liquid Rhythm's way of sort of guessing that the notes that are being placed here are all pretty much close to that one. It's rounding that down and simplifying the information, or else this view would look a little weird. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start turning on some of these other nodes here. If I turn that on, watch what happens. All of a sudden, I've complexified my sequence and I'm going to do it again and maybe throw that one in. Now let's take a listen to what that sounds like now. It's kind of neat. I can also maybe dial in a bit of groove here on the weak notes. There we go. Same thing, I can start changing my, uh, my pattern a bit by playing with some of my uh, surface handlers here in the accent modifier tool. So I'm going to play with some of the velocities that are being played. And again, if I really want to get weird and stupid, I can start shuffling around the color beds, so underlying color shades. And that's going to redistribute those notes. That's how they sit and how they were comparatively sitting previously. Change the colors again. Maybe I'll turn another one of these on and see what that happens. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I could get really freaky and hit the randomizer object and start playing around with those and seeing what kind of information happens. Maybe I hit it a couple more times. Maybe instead of playing with the bar forms, I'll turn those off and just leave beat forms on, play around with collaborate and velocity as well. So when collaborates on, it's going to distribute the notes using a couple different rules. So I'm going to say collaborate on codons as well to reverse sawtooth. And maybe if I turn on some of these notes again, I can start fresh and have a bit more of a sequence. Play around with some of my velocity. Surface handles again here. So you can see how very quickly I went from what we could probably agree was a very boring one chord per bar pattern into lots of different possibilities by taking all of those notes 
inside our liquid rhythm interface and selecting all and then doing some of these math functions, playing around with the, uh, the sequencer, the beat form sequencer, playing around with the molecule tools and mucking around with our randomizer and groove mover objects will all give us some pretty interesting results. So try this at home. Any questions? Watch the video again.